brackets on the fawn are F4 or the next line in um, line one the F4 level for the yellow squash bucket number one the one that I was hoping to goodness would uh, mature the squash and the seed the seed did not look like it was going to germinate at all it was thin and wispy and a lot of them floated but it didn't stop me from planting I didn't get great germination so far but I did get some generation hopefully they'll continue to grow and I have enough plants to make the next generation selection that's my hope because I have run out of seed I planted it all trying to get the next generation going if you look at this one it's a little smaller compared to that one the shape of the leaves the timing of the way it's growing and everything seems to be really consistent which is really good that means that there's a good possibility to get the next generation out of this provided I can get the heat to back off a little bit I managed to get seven of the F4s to grow and even start flowering as you can see here the bigger ones are down here sorry it's a lot of squash going on other squash as you can see here So I'm very pleased with that. And so here are my F4 squash now from that line one bucket one that I love so much. And I've got several seed squash, got one there. I got one here. This was a double. And I don't remember pollinating this one, so I'm not sure what's going on if the plant is signaling to grow this one and it's also trying to grow this one. Or if I pollinated that one, but I don't think I pollinated it. There's my biggest one and seed squash. And I put my hand in there just for reference. And uh, I'm really liking this particular plant. Now, when they when I when you put a seed squash out, a lot of times the other immature squashes abort. All right, we got another one right there that is uh, starting to mature it's a seed squash as well so I've got several squash on here that are potential next generation F5 this is um, 16 September the latest update what's going on with the F4 squash now these are actually F4 seed that means the seed contained in these seeds squash is F5 or fifth generation and I'm really excited about that this is the lead contender right here this one it is still trying to make when all the others quit producing and quit trying because they've got a seed squash going so the fact that this thing is still trying and the leaves are nice and green and it has less insect damage and all that means that this is a lead contender the size of the squash and uh, and and other related issues um, well the size of the squash coupled with the plant habit or what makes it the lead contender okay the other squash over here you got one here you got two you got three four others over here now those I'm not going to throw away either I'm going to lump them into a separate side stash and I'm going to grow them as well on the side but the majority of the grow is going to be this particular one I still want to optimize for taste along with plant habits so that's what's going on with my yellow summer squash it won't be too much longer I'll try to let them go a couple more weeks uh, they've been on the plant setting seed way past growth stage for about a month now and I want them to go at least a couple weeks longer I want to make sure it's some nice big healthy seed in each one of those squash 
All right, it is seed collection time for this line one bucket one squash. The seed within this is F5 yellow squash, folio five or the fifth generation. This is the primary seed. I've got four other squash that I've already collected. The it's the same nomenclature with an A for alternate, and I'll store that seed separately. This is my yellow squash line one seed in the squash is f5 seed but this is the one and i'm very very happy that i got this all the way to the seed squash and we're going to collect that seed today i did want to mention that this seed squash the i guess it was the f3 generation i didn't do it with the f4 but with the f3 generation um, that seed squash stayed good for a few months and this center um, on the alternate seed I just collected yesterday, um, I cut, I took, after I took the seeds, I cut it up and took the hard shell off. And I put that in a soup. And uh, man, it was good. It, it kind of behaved like a potato and it absorbed the soup flavors and probably added a little bit to itself. But I just wanted to tell you that one of the things I like about the potential for this squash is that it can be saved for a long period of time where other summer squash that I've tried to do that for it like withers and sinks in and it misshapens and dries out and it's just really doesn't do it there's no benefit to saving uh, regular summer squash so um, with the next generation I plan to do that I plan to keep a lot of them to see if I can use them as a savory type winter squash now the squash is so incredibly hard you can't hardly penetrate the skin. I've got a pretty tough nail and I push down pretty hard. I mean it's just hard as can be. So I take a knife and I go down one whole side all the way down to the very bottom here. And I flip it over and I do the other same, other way the same way and then I can just kind of twist it and it'll pop in half. Okay, I'm really happy to see this. I've got seeds and it looks like a lot of them are pretty plump and nice. They're going to germinate. And also that this wall, the flesh wall on a full blown seeded out squash is still really thick. Um, which makes me very happy. And I just take a spoon and scrape it out just like I did with this one. Look at all that good flesh. One fairly good way to tell if you have good seed or not is if it floats. You see, I, I, I know I can do it by eye more or less, but you see how some of those are floating? Well, those I'm not going to keep. I'm going to take off. But all the ones that sunk, I'm going to keep those. Now, that is not a hundred percent foolproof way but you know the ones that float if you get rid of them the ones that sunk you have a lot better chance of getting a higher germination rate from using the ones that sunk now of special note this was taken from a squash a seed squash that was on the plant for over a month after it would have nor after it was uh, pollinated and the skin was really really tough and the inside of this squash is wet. I don't know, I guess you can probably see that. It's very moist. If this seed had come out of a dried squash, I would not have put it back in the water uh, because you risk the potential of starting the germination process. And then when it dried out again, it would uh, kill the seed. So I just want to keep that in mind. Um, what else can I tell you about that? Um, I have taken squash prematurely uh, before it could stay on the plant for at least a month past pollination and mostly because of squash vine borers, insect damage, um, just various reasons like that. And from my experience, the seeds do not mature if you cut it off the vine and leave it for a month or two after you cut it off the vine. And they don't really mature anymore from what I can tell. Uh, I'm not an expert on it, but I can tell you 
I've had a lot better success with this particular grow by leaving the squash on the plant for at least a month after after germinate or after germination after pollination and I get a good bit of quality seed from it. I spooned off the floating seed. Now I'm just going to pour it through a colander. That's the seed. Next all I do is I just take a paper towel and just kind of move it around. I just want to get a lot of the moisture off of the seeds and uh, put it on a paper plate to dry. It doesn't have to be completely dry. These things dry really fast. Well, here they are on the plate, and I've marked the plate. And um, these are going to sit on the plate like this. I'm going to put it in a uh, one of the spare bedrooms. Just leave it out and open to the air conditioner. There's no need to put any kind of heat source to it at all. An air conditioned house will suck all that out. You don't have to worry about baking it or overheating or anything. So just leave it in an area that won't get disturbed if you're in an air conditioned house. Now this is late afternoon. Um, let's see what time it is. It is yep, 3.30 in the afternoon. Tomorrow morning, these will be all dry. And all I'll do is I'll come and just with my fingers, I'll move them because they'll stick a little bit to this plate. I'll move them and then I can just shake them up and they will no longer stick at all and they can continue to dry. Now this is the alternate. Uh, and all the seed. I did that same thing. Now I'm going to let these dry, both of these, for at least two weeks. I don't know what it is, but when you test that they're dry enough, you can take one and um, break it in half. It snaps, they say it's done. But that doesn't mean it's going to germinate. I have planted these directly when they were done and gotten poor germination. I don't know why it is, but you need to leave it for at least two weeks, uh, probably a little longer even. After they're completely dry, uh, the seed goes through some kind of process. I don't know what it is, but it seems like uh, the longer you wait within a, you know, rel you know don't want to wait a year, but within a short period of time, I'd say two weeks to a month, and your seed will all germinate just fine. So that's it for that. Now this, I cut off the neck. And I sliced out a piece because I want to taste the texture and uh, see how stringy it was and all that. Um, it gets into other parts of breeding. But anyway, I tasted it. I wanted to see what it tasted like, how sweet it was and all that. And this is good food. All I did with this when I make the soup is I cut out strips. And then when I cut the strips out, I took the knife and I cut off the hard part and just threw it in like a piece of potato. Wonderful stuff. So I'm going to put these in the refrigerator for the next batch of soup. There it is the next morning. I'm just taking my fingers and just kind of unsticking it. I want to summarize right into the video here and uh, I want to summarize that you grow the squash, you leave it on the vine for as long as possible, at least I would say a month after fertilization after pollination rather and uh, then you bring it inside and you can cut it open and remove the seeds do the floaty thing floaty sinky thing if it's wet or just put it on a paper towel if it's dry I mean a, a paper towel if it's dry or a glass plate or any kind of plate and then uh, do this now I need at least, now that these are stuff. I need at least two more weeks before I put them in any kind of um, container or envelope or seed packet or wherever you store your seed. And then at least uh, another two weeks or so before you try to germinate it or grow it again for like a fall garden or something. This is Brent, y'all. We'll see you later.